I focused on measurement using questionnaires, surveys, and tests, but of course there are many other ways to measure social and psychological constructs. In biology, medicine, and psychology, physical measures are very common. Think of things like electrical skin conductance to measure arousal, eye tracking to measure focus of attention, EEG and fMRI to register brain activity and reaction times to assess cognitive ability. Another way to measure is through observation, a method frequently used in sociology, psychology, and educational sciences. Observational measurement might seem simple, but there is more to it than just observing and recording all the behavior that you see. Systematic observation involves careful registration of specific behavior. Researchers employ coding schemes that specify categories of behavior and their criteria. They specify what the behavior in each category looks like, how long it should be displayed, and under what circumstances it should occur. A researcher also needs to decide on the time frame to be coded. Will we view an entire hour of videotape behavior, or will we sample five two-minute intervals? If we have tape material of an hour for each of 60 participants, then the two-minute intervals might be a better idea. Other important issues are training and calibration of observers. Coding schemes can be complex, and target behavior can be really difficult to spot, so it's a good idea to have more than one observer and to train observers until they show enough agreement when coding the same material. Agreement between different observers, called the inter-rater reliability, should be high, of course. If reliability is low, well then at least one of the observers codes the behavior differently from the rest. Or, even worse, the behavior cannot be interpreted consistently. Okay, let's move on to a related form of measurement. Trace measurement assesses behavior indirectly through physical trace evidence. An example is counting the number of used tissues after a therapy session to represent how depressed a client is. Sometimes a property can be represented with measurements that were already collected by others. We refer to this as archival data. An example of archival research is to use census data collected by a national research institute on income and voting behavior. We can investigate whether areas with a higher average income are associated with more votes for conservative political parties. Trace measurement, and especially archival data, are frequently used in political sciences and sociology. Content analysis is a technique that shares characteristics with observational, archival, and trace measurement. Like observational measurement, content analysis consists of structured coding, but of elements in a text. The text can consist of newspaper articles, blogs, narratives, or transcription of interviews. Content analysis can be used, for example, to see if conservative and liberal politicians argue differently by identifying the number of emotional and rational words they use in newspaper interviews. Of course, this is a simple example. Text can be coded automatically according to very complex schemes using computer software. A final measurement method I want to discuss is interviewing. In a structured interview, the questions, the question order, and response options are predetermined. This type of interview, be it face-to-face, -face, through telephone or Skype, is not much different from using a survey. The response rate of interviews is higher, but it can be more difficult to get unbiased answers to sensitive questions. Unstructured or open interviews are very different. An open interview is considered a qualitative method. Now, although the focus here is on quantitative methods, I quickly describe open interviews because they are used very often. In an open interview, the interviewer starts off with a general topic and usually has a set of points to be addressed. But the interview is not limited to these points. Questions are open-ended and there is little structure, so the conversation can lead anywhere, depending on the respondent's answers. The questions that will come up and the range of answers are undetermined. Of course, this makes it much harder to compare and aggregate data from different respondents. I won't go into other qualitative methods here, but you should know there are other methods available, such as case studies, focus groups, oral histories, participatory observation, and many, many more.